Welcome to the After Dark Podcast with Anthony James and Conrad. This is an extra episode for your YouTube comments because Anthony James and Conrad could not stop rambling on. What a pair of schmucks. Hello and welcome to the After Dark Podcast. I'm Anthony James and that's Conrad. Hello. That's him. Well, Conrad, how have you been this last half an hour? Uh, I've been great. I've got a fresh juice. Um, fresh juice. I, uh, apple. Apple uh, dilute I've got. I've got apple as well. Apple apple cordial. Um, that's, anyway. what, that's what I've got. Dilute, yeah. Dilute. I've never heard it called dilute before. Um, well, give me some dilute there. <laughs> you know, that's what they... <laughs> Don't call it squash. I'll just get more English. Hello, friend. Yeah. yeah. Squash, yeah. please. No, I just love it. That's the only thing you say in like a Northern Irish accent. You're like, give me some dilute. How like much that. would that be? That sounds like Australian <laughs> Um, yeah, but yeah. Uh, uh, dilute juice. But I will say before we go on, just just for anyone who wants to know, right? I have never actually had uh, cordial this apple flavored before two months ago, and I'll tell you what, as this person, I when I will admit, it, I'm saying it on the internet now, Conrad. So I'm common public. Yep. I had a very serious. Public. I had a very serious Pepsi Max addiction, right? Yeah. I'm like there's many of us who have diet diet soda addictions like and I I used to drink like two liters a day and uh, I don't drink it anymore at all I haven't had any any since June uh, you it's know. very good I've got some in my fridge right now jeez yeah what you, yeah yeah well luckily lucky there's a there's a sea between us but uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, there's some there's some in the shop just down the road but I haven't got any but but basically my point is that uh, this stuff cordial apple cordial yeah. tastes so much like apple juice i can't believe it every yeah. other cordial is like a cheap knockoff of the juice i can't believe it what about your apple cordial you enjoy yours over it's there? good yeah i, I haven't let's seen take it. a sip together let's take a sip together <laughs> that's good stuff delicious <laughs> delish aspartame the cause of and solution to all of life's problems yeah, um, solution is a very good pun there yes yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um Let's Yeah, it's it. good. I like I like apple juice, but I don't drink fruit juice cuz there's a lot of sugar in it, so I go for mm-hmm. this instead. It's is that, great is stuff. That the, is that the Tesco brand? Uh no, Sainsbury's. Oh, well, that's, all right, a, that's all right. This is a peek inside the world of British supermarkets for those Actually. of you on the continent who really wanted to know what it's like shopping in a British supermarket. Yeah, and let me let me just uh, add one more thing before we get into the questions because uh, it is it is hilarious. Um, do you remember when, when I w- do you remember when I used to live in King- Queens Park? Yes, in London. Well, up the road from my house, I don't know if you remember, there was a nice little convenience store owned by an Indian gentleman, and he had very cleverly named his store as a parody of Sainsbury's, Singsbury's. <laughs> I don't remember that being called that, but well done that man. <laughs> well done that man. It, <laughs> yeah. was, it was unbelievable. All right, what do you say we go to some questions? Yeah, let's do it. A stranger from the outside. First question from Beware of Boredom. What do you think of the fact that the cleanup crew are in league with Eva instead of Adam? How do you think this collaboration came about? Um. Well, I mean, they're aware. Like Eva is clearly aware. Of some of the goings on in the other world, and I think the youngest member of the cleanup crew died in the apocalypse in the other world because there was a photo of a body that looks an awful lot like the child. So I imagine they said, "Look at what these dickheads are up to. Come and help me out, so we can stop that from happening and preserve or, or mm-hmm. screw them over. We don't care. We can preserve our world, but we are, like you've got to make sure you help me." Um, but I think they occupy kind of the Noah role, like they're the heavy of. Um, of the, I, I keep wanting to call them Sigmundus, even though I know they're not. I've already forgotten the name. Uh, Eric Lux. Like, Eric Lux, yeah. So, um, yeah, they're kind of like the. Uh, they feel like the kind of the Noah equivalent, the 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 the, the person or um, I guess people who go off and get things done and uh, you know intimidate people or just outright kill them. Yeah. Oh God. Yep. Uh, so Sea Bad Moon says. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to talk to talk to you about this show without any shackles. I'm um, swear to God. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, right. Okay. So, uh, what implications of uh, younger old, younger Alt Marta working with Adam? What are the implications? 
I think she's being corrupted because she yeah, she knows that. she knows stuff that Jonas did not know, and she seems to be mm-hmm. at least partially in on it. I don't. I still think she's being manipulated to a certain extent, but I think I, I in, in my mind there's going to be an in, uh, the, an interesting way to write those characters would be for Marta to also serve as a darker reflection of Jonas because he obviously has Adam and Stranger but I feel like with those characters because they're later in his life both Jonas and Stranger can look at the person they're going to become and fool themselves into being like oh I'm not going to become that because you know I'm going to do x y and z zif- differently whereas with Alt Marta he's literally watching someone who is kind of his exact double do the exact same things he's doing and mm. i think maybe he'll see how easily he could be misled or corrupted um if 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 he if he made the wrong decisions interesting um the real question here from sea bad moon is though how amazing is it that old marta has committed to the same hairstyle for 66 years listen when you find something that works with your face shape you stick with it you know yep. that's like don't don't if it ain't broke don't fix it that's what marta says <laughs> yeah end is the beginning and the beginning I, is the end guys she I, can't yeah, change exactly, she can't yeah. change your hairstyle i think as well if if marta had not died and had lived to see alt marta turn up with the fringe she would have agreed with alt marta's choice <laughs> like, yeah yeah, yeah. Not, tell you what I've yeah we would have had a fr- we would have had a fringe in both worlds yeah. right, at that point <laughs> yeah. dead marta like she actually looked up as alt marta was whisking away with Jonas, as, as the last bit of blood was squirting out of her she was like Hang on a minute. Oh, <laughs> That's a nice yeah. look. <laughs> yeah. For my last three seconds of life here, I might give it a go. Yeah, just... <laughs> <laughs> Santino Somalo says, Now that Regina is dead, what about the sword fight? Um, I mean, she is dead, but, it, I mean, there's still 80s Regina, who is, you know, the, the, the sort of spry, nimble swords, sword master because she's the one who's actually doing the fencing lessons. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have previously discussed the idea of a Force Ghost Claudia, um, which does obviously... Op- I mean, I mean uh, we've all seen... Wait, hold on. Which one's the last one of the new Star Wars movies? With Luke um... Force projecting? Oh, no, that was the middle one. Was that Rise of Sky... Oh, I can't remember. The Last Jedi. What are you talking about? The, the one that the, Luke... The, like, the ninth for- one. The one that where Luke, like projects himself oh that's last jedi yeah that's, that's the last one. jedi that's yeah eighth. so so maybe regina can do something like that where she'll like project herself back to life through her force sensitivity that she shares with claudia okay and then she'll get shot at by a bunch of 8080s okay <laughs> i would love someone to go through our podcast and edit together all the different scenarios you've had for the for the regina sword yeah. fight not, not no no two scenarios are alike in that situation, yeah. I'm just like coming up with an increasingly elaborate people that she can fight or situations that she can explore her combat skills in. Yep, exactly. All right, next question from Alex. And Alex asks For Conrad, why does alt, the alt world look like a desert in 2052 when the prime world. Good use of the prime that's world. A, I, that's a good name. That's, I, I completely forgot that I called it the Prime World. Even it's, during my all my theories, I called it the Prime World. That's a good uh, name. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to steal that. Yeah, I actually stopped calling it. I don't know why I stopped calling it the Prime World. I think it's maybe because I just started calling it Adam's World and Eva's World so much. But Prime World was what I used to call it too. So we'll go back to that. Um, had Because we're fumbling around with the names of these worlds. So that's, that's good. Alt and Prime. Got to get it straight. Yeah. So in the Prime World had a full forest with mutant bug nests in the trees. So... What do you think? Now I know the answer. So, what do you think the 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 difference is, and what's the reason for it? Before I answer well, it, well, first off, can I just say that I appreciate this question asker acknowledging the weird bug monsters that are clearly present in twenty fifty two. Even if we don't see them, you and I both know they're there. Uh, yeah, and they just chose not to show them. So, um, I guess it, well, this is kind of just pulling a theory out of the air. But the the very brief radio um, bit of sort of expository news dialogue we heard on the radio talks about the tides being all messed up um as a result of the nuclear fallout i guess of the the accident mm-hmm. in vinden um so i guess it stands to reason that if the tides are all messed up they could recede away from certain areas and create deserts by just making them completely arid so europe you know the the, the tides could recede far enough that that you know central europe is 
basically devoid of devoid of water in large parts because Europe isn't that big. I, I I think you know the Sahara Desert would take up quite a lot of Europe. So I guess maybe that's what's happened. Okay. So the answer actually is now whether or not the show has depicted it in a true way, I'm not sure. But this is what they were going for, right? So Fallout nuclear fallout can can come in two varieties, two flavors. The, Two flavors. So the first is a small amount of carcinogenic material with a long half-life. And that's like the elephant's foot that you were referring to a few episodes ago in real life. And the second, depending on the height of the detonation, is a large quantity of radioactive dust and sand with a short half-life. Oh, okay. So So it's just the the two different types of uh, fallout. And how do I know that? Because I literally looked it up on Wikipedia. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> there you go that's the the answer to many the many problems can be found on wikipedia that's really interesting though uh so what the the second kind just basically creates deserts by like covering an area in dust and sand yeah now i don't know if it would be as much dust and sand as is in the show but that's what they i think pretty sure that's what they were drawing from the two yeah. different types of fallout yeah very cool very cool uh okay so from handsome head injury how much does adam love high collars Oh, well, we mentioned this a little bit in the forget main episode. about it. Like he, if he could, if, uh, I, I, he should just wear a hat. Like he should wear like a full hood with a hat and just have a little eyes and just be like, "Hello, hello." <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he, he's his collar's getting higher and higher, and I am here for it. Yeah, it's great. Okay, so M O asks, why do you think Adam and potentially other Sigmundus members have has moved to twenty fifty three? That is a good question. I guess because they've got the portal there. So they can kind of manipulate it and go wherever they want from that portal. As to why they did it there rather than just sticking around in the 20s where they also had access to the portal. Maybe it's just easier to operate in a sort of post-apocalyptic society where you're not having to kind of hide from hide from mm-hmm. people because they're all dead. That would, That would probably be my guess. Yeah, like there's there's nothing to change there, so to speak. Yeah. Um, question for both of you: If you had one person out of the dark universe, ca- uh, you know, dark universe, all the cast, who would who would you be and why? Considering everything that is waiting for you, <sighs> I don't feel I can give a real answer on this uh, because I've seen the whole show. So I'll give an answer as if I've only seen as much as Conrad. Okay, off you go first. Yeah, I'm trying to think of who has the least horrible stuff happened to them and it's not an easy one to answer um mm. so i don't want to end up dead i'd like i was thinking alexander because he has quite a happy relationship for a while but he ends up dead yeah. um magnus maybe his sister dies that would be rubbish um mm-hmm. uh <laughs> I'm 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 just gonna say Agnes. She has lots of sex. <laughs> so that seems and doesn't die as far as I'm aware, so yeah. Okay, Agnes. Uh for me, well if you're being Agnes, I'll be Doris. Oh nice. <laughs> let's, nice. let's let's do it together, right? Okay, so <laughs> Touche. Alright, so uh next question from Lord Stannis. So the opening scene might be my favourite scene in all of Dark. Where do you rank this? Uh, so the opening scene is, I think, the one where they're back in 66 years before. So 1822, that's the one when they're the, there. The one in the carriage. Yeah. Yeah. Favorite scene in all of Dark. Where do you think this ranks in terms of non-montage she- scenes in the show so far? Uh, it's very high. I think uh, photographically, like it's really beautiful the way it's shot. Mm-hmm. It's also, it's it's quite different in terms of how it presents action. Not, I mean, dark doesn't have that much action in it, but the, it, it uses, you know, the kind of quite tense action movie tropes of having, you know, like the, the camera fixed inside a small place where a camera and like fixed on a, ca- a character as they are hearing mm-hmm. violence going on outside. It's not something that dark has really done before, but it's really cool. And I, yeah, I do. I love the shot of, um, the, the the tracking shot of the the carriage moving across the forest is really beautiful. Um, yeah. I don't know if I could give it like an accurate ranking um, because I definitely do something. Uh, I definitely f- fail to do something justice, but it's it's definitely up there. It's really good. 
Yeah, I liked it too. Okay, so uh, Bill Ross asks, um, hope I'm not getting ahead. I don't think you are with this question. But what is the origin of Charlotte's pocket watch? I think we saw the origin kind of in this episode, didn't we? Well, yeah. Depends whether you, it depends whether you, where it, if, if it's a circle. Or, yeah, I mean, I'm, I feel like it must be a circle because it's it's like, these guys are taking it from um from Gustav, but he must like it says for Charlotte, so at some point that must have been given to Charlotte or created for I guess maybe the watch was could have been created and then the engraving for Charlotte specifically done at a later point um but it, yeah. no 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 it it said for Charlotte then in the in the opening scene it had, it's... yeah but i'm I'm saying like maybe. At, at some point in its creation, it didn't have that written on it, and then it was brought back to eighteen gotcha. twenty twenty two and given to this guy. Um, but I think it's a it's got to be a bootstrap situation that now, like it's just going around in a circle without ever being created. Yeah, possibly. So Adam McCready asks: Now that Katarina um, has met her mother in the eighties, where do you think the, that relationship will end up? W- specifically with. Um, with her mother, yeah, I don't think it'll end well. As I say, I, I, I'm growing more and more confident that Katarina's is dying fairly soon, um, and getting tossed in that lake. So, maybe, maybe Katarina will go and try to go to the lake to try and prevent something abusive her mother did to her, and end up getting hurt as a result or something like that. Um, I, I, I feel like her relationship with her mother it has to be fairly central because. It seems like it formed a large part of her character for a long, a long time. Although, as you said in the last episode, Catherine is one of the characters who's done really well to kind of get away from that cycle of abuse and 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 not perpetuate it. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's going to end well for Katarina. Okay, interesting. <laughs> Master on your north uh, is chiming in, and he says, "Are you two still smucking around?" So typical. Uh, then he says. What does Conrad think about the middle-aged Marta said to Jonas in her bunker? Um, that's Master on your north. That's the first time it's happened the whole time. I d- now I think I think we can all we can all imagine that uh, he's going to be speaking to middle-aged Marta next episode. <laughs> but uh, Master on your north, what have you done, sir? <laughs> I mean, I. It's not that. Um, yeah. What do you think about what she said, by the way? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I think she told him that she really missed. I try to think of um, a German. Ah, oh, you know what's a really good German treat that I haven't had in ages. Is that they, that my my friends in Germany used to make this thing called vanilla Kipfel, which is like shortbread but with like powdered sugar on it. It's so fucking good. And I bet that she, that's what she says to him. Like I really miss vanilla Kipfel. <laughs> you cannot get shortbread in the desert for love nor money. Um, so I think that's what she's going to talk about. But I mean, to be honest, the re- the reveal that um, a, like a stranger Marta will have a conversation with Jonas is not that spoilerific, to be honest. It's no, it's not. It's not. Um, you know, and obviously the the bunker has he- featured heavily in one world, so why wouldn't it in another? Yeah. So well, I'm not going to read any more of that, uh, Master on your north. You go sit in the corner and you For think shame. about what you've done. You think For about shame. what you've done. Shame. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh i can't believe we've got this far without that happening before i know like that was i saw the realization dawning in your eyes and i was just sitting here like uh... yes yeah, so you're like give it to me give it to me <laughs> it's not my it's not my fault it's yep, not my fault. i'm having it uh, it's like i want I, I wanted more i wanted something i could build a theory off of yeah exactly okay so next question is um going to be milos love it milos Vitten, uh, and they say uh Satnam, guys, thank you for another fun review. No problem. Uh, it's very interesting that Conrad called the Unknown Trio a destructive force. What did he think in the case? Uh, in that case, who would be uh, the p- preservative force and who would be the creative force? Within such holy trinity, what Conrad thinks were the transformations stand? Okay, so I'll, I'll sort of boil it down to the preservative force and the creative force. Well, I think the preservative force is also them, it seems. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, if you're talking about it in like a kind of, I only really know about it in terms of like Hindu mythology, but I'm sure it's in other places. Like you've got the destroyer, then you've got the preserver, then you've got the creator. So, mm-hmm. but they, they work in a cycle. So some someone has to come along and burn everything down 
so that someone can then rebuild it uh, like from the ashes springs new life and then that's preserved for a little while so i think it, they are all kind of operating within that cycle um you know they they destroy everything and then it's remade um by the the sigmundus or the the, the erin lux guys and uh, they say they want to preserve stuff but they are still fundamentally changing things so that is the kind of creative force within their own ideology and then the main, main maintaining of it is also performed by them as well um th- there probably is like a broader analysis you could do of that that kind mm-hmm. of trinity of forces w- when you look at sigmundus Aaron lux and and claudia's um goals but i think they're all kind of it's it's like um I'm gonna use a I'm gonna use a tenuous metaphor here that I'm coming up with on the spot, but it's like if you're unpicking a knot, you could call that a destructive force, but you still have the rope that created the knot at the end of it. So mm-hmm. like it it's it is that destructive to destroy the, the knot so that you can do something else with the rope. Um, I don't really have an answer to that, but I think that's that's kind of where we're heading. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That was a very sceptical response. That okay, all right. We'll leave it there. Um, I'm still, I'm still reeling from Master on your north. To be honest with you, yeah, you're shook. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Uh, all right. Um, it's it's down to me, really. I can just imagine someone commenting saying, "Well, you know, Anthony, you really should screen these comments." <laughs> yeah, but where's to the them fun I in say, that? then to them I say, no. What what I want. <laughs> I shouldn't. I'm. Not, I shouldn't really say this, but I'm going to. If, if someone can fit like a spoiler into an acrostic, yeah. Say like the the, fir- the first letter of every of every sentence gives out a spoiler. I'll allow those because I'm like because I'll only f- I won't figure it out until I read it. Yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. Well. Don't do that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can just imagine every single comment. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. You know, actually, you know what the biggest theory coming out of season two was what I never actually mentioned to you. Yeah, go on. It was me. It was a meme, like, but that it was it was it was everywhere. Gretchen is Adam. <laughs> I mean, we've seen we've seen characters completely change who they are between worlds. We've Why seen not you, Gretchen, and we've seen young boys grow to regain their hearing exactly. and speech. So well, anything's possible. And also, mutation will do weird things to dogs. So, you know, Gretchen could learn to speak. That's why Adam wears such high collars. Yeah. <laughs> because it's like... He's covering his dog collar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because he still has to have it, because he's still... Like, Gretchen is still loyal to Claudia. Yeah. So you have yeah. to cover the collar. doesn't want to not wear it, just in case it get lost, you know? Yeah, exactly. But, uh, yeah, but, but uh, it has to, has to hide it somehow. All right. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> next question from uh, Atahan. Atahan says, uh, Conrad, out of Sigmundus and Eret Lux, which do you think are the good guys and bad guys? Neither. They're clearly, neither of them are good guys. <laughs> like they're all bastards. They're just different. They're, this is um okay. So this is like in. I'm, I'm going to talk about wrestling for a second here. So if you don't know anything about wrestling, particularly wrestling in the 90s, fast forward about five minutes or so, and I, and I apologize for wasting your time. But this is like in the 90s when like NWO started fighting like the four horsemen and they were technically both heel stables. <laughs> but And you had to pick a side. But it was like, I don't like either of these groups of people. But one of them had like Ric Flair in it. So you went with that. And I think that's where that's where we are with, with Sigmundus and Aaron Lux. Yeah. I yeah, don't know which one's uh, the four horsemen though. Probably, probably Sigmundus. They've been around longer. Yeah, they're, they're the OG. Yeah. Um. So, uh, okay. So then Christopher asks. There's a whole long thing here of Christopher sort of making his thoughts, m- changing and moving throughout the episode. Um. But finally, there's an edit at the end that says, "Okay, I finished the finished the episode, <laughs> the podcast now. Here's the question. Uh. So the question I think is basically boiled down to. Um. You talk about the idea of things changing or like sort of like maybe the, the fact that Stranger didn't go to the old world is one of the things you mentioned, right? Yeah. Basically, Christopher just wants to ask, how do you think that these changes have been accomplished? That's a good question. So I think it goes back to the 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 idea that they discussed very early on in fact i've even forgotten the name for it it's not relativity where where like things are predetermined what's the word they use for it 
predeterminism. It, that's not the word they use, but yeah, like that everything that basically you have no choice in what you're what you're you're going to do, and you're you're always going to do it. I apologize mm-hmm. for forgetting the word. It's because it hasn't been mentioned by H.G. Townhouse in like two seasons of television. But I think it goes back to that, plus this idea that small changes can be like time itself will sort of correct things to to fit people into where where it needs them to be for the same events to unfold so i think broadly speaking everything kind of will happen as it has always happened um Mm. but there are these small changes in time that are possible to achieve and as long as the big events still happen in the sequence that they've happened previously um the the kind of small details don't actually matter too much so like like those little changes like you know oryx with hannah in the the alt world and stuff like that um but i think the big stuff so like marta meeting Jonas and um and uh, like reaching across the world that there must be some way that someone has found to alter the timeline without the timeline sort of correcting itself i don't know how that's possible it's not really been (laughs) explored at all but that there must be a way to do it. Maybe, I mean, everything we've seen of Claudia has been her saying, very similarly to a lot of the other characters, that all these events still need to happen the way they've happened before. And maybe it is up until a certain point, the events need to happen as they have before, because that's the stuff that will be preserved. But after that, it's anyone's ball game. Okay. Okay. I think. I don't you know. I <laughs> I mean, we are, getting, we are really getting to the stage of the show now where I can't really elaborate yeah. on anything you say in these little theory crafting sessions because I know the answers. And, tell and me it's, how it's, it works. I can't even really tell you what I was thinking at the time because binging and all that. Um, yeah. I think I was probably... I think I think up to this point, I was probably still thinking that Stranger had been made to forget oh, okay. somehow, to be honest with you. Um but I can't. I can't fully remember. Let's be honest. Um, so Vic Disco comes in and asks uh, the book that Peter has from Sigmundus. Um, do you think it contains the fates of every character? Uh, or what, you know, what is the the point of this book at this stage in the story? And I also, if it does contain the fates of the characters, does that mean Peter will know how he's going to meet his fate? I don't think he does because he seems shocked when Noah told him that he was going to die. Um, why does that book mean something to Peter, though? That is the question. Well, I think Peter's a traveller, or, well, I don't think he necessarily knew about it, but I think he's been brought, he was brought to the 80s from another time, and we've kind of discussed how there's a really old timey photo of him in, um, in the, or there was, in the Sigmunders headquarters, which definitely mm-hmm. implies that he grew up in another time. So, it could be that it is something that he was given by whoever raised him um, in that in that time, and it's more of an emotional keepsake, or maybe he's been told that he needs to give it to someone. I don't think it has the fates of every character written in it, though, or else it would be way more sought after. And it's the kind of thing that, I mean, maybe they will, but the kind of thing that the cleanup crew would come after and be like, nope, not having that. Um mm. But yeah, it's I I'm not really got a clear idea of what's in that book. It, you know, it was obviously important to Noah at the beginning. It was very important to Adam in in season two, getting those pages back. But now that I think about it, I can't really remember what they did with those pages in the end. I guess they. I don't know if they ever explicitly say what they were able to do by getting those pages back. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um the, i'm the, not the, sure on that is the, yeah. is the broadly speaking i don't yeah i don't think we've actually been shown adam really doing anything although having said that he's always tinkering away at something so yeah maybe he, his every thing he's done since then has been you know uh because of those pages we don't know but yeah uh, that's true right okay so last thing last question from cabu cross and cabu cross asks this is the, ask the important questions here Okay. What does Conrad think about Clausen and the unknown being pen pals? <laughs> I 
think that they're peas in a pod, to be honest. Like, because I'll tell you why. Because that middle one <laughs> loves a monologue. He loves, you know, you know, he loves oh, his. Yeah, yeah. He, he, you know, sashays over to people with his garrote out, making his like. <laughs> Talking about you know nothing matters and whatever else he's got to got to say. He's not listening to them. He just wants to put on a show. And Clausen absolutely <laughs> loves that. That's like Clausen all over that kind of thing. So they're like two drama students in a room together, just monologuing at each other. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, well there you go. Um, thank you very much, guys. That's all the questions we have this week. Um, so nice. next week we're up to episode four. So that'll be uh, it's currently Friday. So that'll be on Monday. Yeah. Um, I, but that is in the future for us, Conrad. Uh, have you any, anything planned for this weekend? Anything fun? Um, I'm meeting some friends tomorrow while acknowledging the lockdown, or not lockdown, acknowledging the government restrictions in this Guides, country. Yeah. yeah, we're having dinner outside in separate tables. That'll be fun. Um, yeah, be great. And then, not really. I'm going to play a lot of Cyberpunk 2077, I think. Oh, you got it, did you? I did, yeah. I like cyberpunk stuff. So that I made it go with pink hair, so I'll probably play some of that. All right, excellent. I'm, I'm, I'm going to watch a few videos before I decide to take the plunge on that. Yep. But apart from that, can you please subscribe on YouTube? Subscribe on audio apps. Can you please also email us at adpodmail at gmail.com if you have any questions or queries that you want to keep a bit private. If there's anything you want to, you want to tell us without the rest of the comments, click the little thumbs. <laughs> uh, so, uh, guys, that's, that's us this week. We are motoring towards the end now, and we're having good fun. But apart from that, goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to the After Dark Podcast. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an episode.